Amen. Thank you, choir. All the scriptures today and the special songs are, are meant to just give our graduates a special message today. And our gospel is also a special, special message to you folks too, and to all of us. It's taken from the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, beginning at verse 28, and reads as follows in Jesus' name. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you have need of them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And here ends our gospel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Let's open up our red hymn books to 393 and let's sing Breathe on Me Breath of God. Let's uh, go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for breathing your Holy Spirit into us that we can have life, God. Lord, that we can be all that you called and created us to be. Oh, Jesus, speak to our hearts today and bring us closer to you. And we ask this all in your wonderful, precious name. Amen. 
Well, today is graduation day for four of our young people. And I know you're pretty excited about this. And uh, today, 64 graduates in Grantsburg are graduating from high school. Yesterday, um, Webster graduated a group. Friday, Siren graduated a group. And next weekend, Frederick and Spooner will be graduating a group. And there are people all over the whole United States this month that are graduating from high school and college and graduate school. And it's a pretty exciting thing. I mean, today is a milestone in your life. And a milestone is, a, is an, an important event that kind of determines the way you go from here. Now, you've had some others already. You know, when you were baptized, even though you don't remember it. And confirmation, that was a milestone, and you remember that one. And uh, you're going to have some others, too, even after today. I mean, graduating from college or, gradu or uh, military or school or uh, vocational school, those are all going to be milestones, too. Getting married is a milestone. Having children is one. Getting that first career job is another and then for many of us here, retirement was another milestone. And we have them throughout life. And they mark, they mark where we're going to go from here. And today, you're having one. Th this is a really exciting day because things are about to change for you. Big changes. I mean, for the first time in your life, you're going to be more independent than you've ever been before. Not totally independent. It's a process. I mean, if you go to college or the military, you're going to depend on those people too. But you're going to have choices to make. We all have choices to make in life. And we make them every day. And some of the choices you're going to make, are, what am I going to do with God in all of this? And in Ecclesiastes... that was read today, it said, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator while you are still young. Boy, you don't realize fully how good you have it right now. I mean, you look at people that are driving nice big cars, you say, well, I wish I had one. Or the guy that can take out his checkbook and write a check for the clothes that he wants or whatever they need, and you say, I wish I had that. But you know what you've got? You've got youth, you've got health, and you've got your whole future in front of you. And when you get older, you're going to realize how good you have it right now. And praise God for that. Enjoy every minute of it. You know, the Bible says this in Ecclesiastes 11. It says, now it's going to use young man, but it's also talking about young women here too. Okay. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. And what the Bible verse is saying here is God gives the... We all have the whole world in front of us. And God gave it to us to enjoy every day. And all the exciting things that, that we can pick every day, stuff you can buy, stuff you can do, dreams that you have that you can make Trump come true. But know that whatever you choose, there is coming a day when you will answer to God for it. It's coming a day when I'll answer to God for the things I chose. And all of us here probably say, hey, if we had it to do over again, there, there might have been a few other choices we would have made. But probably most of us are still pretty satisfied with the way we went. 
You know, some, some comment I hear from a lot of older people. They say to me, if I, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of my body. <laughs> Remember that, okay? You, you could live a long time. My mother's 98. She's got a cousin that's going to be 101 on Tuesday. And she still lives alone. Wow. Yeah. And so take good care of your body. You know, watch what you eat, what you drink. You're going to be going on to college now, and there's going to be lots of temptations that you have never had before because Satan wants to trip you up. He wants to mess up your life. But if you remember your creator, you're not going to get messed up. If you remember your creator, if you follow God, keep him in the center of your life. Talk to him every day. You know, when you're, when you're off to school and you're homesick, uh, just talk to God. Remember, he's with your fa- family, and he's with you, and you're as close to them as you are to the Lord. When you've got important decisions to make, ask God, Lord, what should I choose? Because he wants to give you the right direction. He's there for you. In France, there's a, uh, a home that looks like a castle. There's several of them there. This one is called Chateau Lumiere. It was built in the early 1900s by a rich, very rich man who uh, made money selling tobacco. This house, this house is beautiful. It's a palace. But in the late 1950s, this man died and there was nobody left to live in his palace. It was sold a couple times, but for 50 years, nobody has lived in this beautiful, beautiful mansion. And you know what happened to it in the last 50 years? It deteriorated. The paint's coming off the wall. The floors are breaking up. This multi-million dollar chateau is falling apart because the owner is no longer living in it. And it's the same with our lives. The Bible says, do you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you? Keep them there. Because as long as the owner of your body, the owner of your spirit, God himself, is living inside, your life is going to be kept beautiful. But if he leaves, or if you leave and just kind of, I do it my own way, God, things begin to deteriorate. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. And all of us here, we're all still pretty young. Even if we're in our 80s or 90s, you're just a kid. Consider Abraham or Methuselah. These guys were old. We're all pretty young. Remember your creator. Develop a relationship with God closer than you ever had and you will be embark on the most exciting journey you could ever imagine. God has everything for you. He knows the direction he wants to take you. Keep him in the center of your life. Remember your creator in the days of your youth and watch what he's going to do in your life because he is with you. Amen. Let's open.